Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today we'll be talking about our predictions for the 15 most broken champions of patch 12.13. One of the most important things in a constantly evolving game like League of Legends is to be able to adapt with the meta. And that's why we're here for you. If you want to know what's going to be OP before the patch even hits, you're ready to be hit the ground running without even having to test if one nerf or buff really made that much of a difference. And if you don't know how to play any of these OP picks or you're just a little bit rusty, this will give you a few days to brush up on them in some normals or on a smurf. Before we get started, I just want to say that this list is not in any particular order. It's just a list of champions that we predict will be some of the strongest, most influential picks on this patch. We'll be starting things off in the top lane with Wukong. Even after the patch 12.12b nerfs that Wukong got, Wukong is still an absolute monster. For one, the bonus damage that his E does to monsters isn't the only thing that makes him broken in the jungle. His ganking, dueling, skirmishing, and team fighting are all S tier. He's also a damage dealer that's easily tanky enough to serve as a frontliner, so he fits into any comp with ease. But even if they did nerf his clear speed, let's not forget that Wukong isn't only broken in the jungle. He's an OP tier pick in the top and mid lane too, and the measly 10 second nerf to his ult at rank 1 isn't going to affect him at all. So to all you Wukong abusers out there, keep on milking them for all that free LP. I know I am. Whether you're trying to learn to abuse the broken champions on this list, or how to deal with them when you end up on the wrong side of the matchup, if you really want to speed up that process, you should check out ProGuides.com. We have courses from all your favorite streamers and pros like Core JJ, Aphromoo, and Xmithy to really help you understand how to play your role. And if you want a more personalized experience, we have coaches available 24-7, ready to help you guys become the best. Our coaches are top-tier players that have spent years climbing the LQ ladder to get where they are now, and they're ready to share everything that they've learned with you. Anyway, let's get back on topic, shall we? Our next pick is Fiddlesticks. This is one of the ones that we're not too sure about. Fiddlesticks was by far one of the most elo inflating champions of Season 11. You could just lock him in, AFK farm until you had your ultimate, rinse, and repeat. And voila, you would win most of your games. This season, he's been mostly pretty good, but he's fallen off in the recent patches. Right now, he's pretty mediocre. The buff that he got coming on patch 12.13 looks pretty small. But the thing is, both his fear and his ultimate are basically 90% of Fiddle's strength. Just an extra quarter of a second on the fear and some extra damage on the ultimate can easily be enough to push him back to being one of the best scaling picks in the game. Those two abilities are what makes him such a disgusting 5v5 champion after all. The jungler that we're not nearly as unsure about is Belvet. 12.12b brought yet another round of nerfs to the Void Empress, but we're pretty sure that she's still going to be strong. Like, really strong. She still works exactly the same as before. She's a bit weak early, but once you get the snowball rolling, it can be very, very difficult for your opponents to stop you. She has ridiculous amounts of solo carrying power, so I think she's still my pick for the best champ to climb with as a jungle main. A champ that I think deserves to be picked a lot more is Zillion. This dude is consistently sitting at a high win rate every single patch, and still, he's picked less than like 20 other champions in his role. And that's just looking at him as a support. Let's also not forget that Zillion is a really strong capable solo laner as well. He may only have one damaging ability, but that's all you really need to clear waves and farm up. It's not like you need to go for super aggressive plays during the laning phase, when you're just going to outscale just about anybody that you lane against in teamfights. Our next pick is Master Yi. Like Fiddle earlier, this is a little bit more of a guesswork than a strong prediction. But we really think that the skill expressiveness that they're implementing for him will really help really good Master Yi players carry a lot harder than before. It's nice to see a buff like this put in rather than raising and lowering damage numbers. Now let's take a look at Seraphine. We've been pushing Seraphine as a bot laner for months now. She's been way, way, way better in this role than her intended role as a support. Her Riot in some weird effort to make her good where they want her to be played has continued throwing out buff after buff after buff. Finally, she actually is pretty good as a support, but at what cost? Well, she reached a point where she was beyond OP as a ball and carry. She's truly become a god tier pick, with her 12.12 win rate peaking at the high 50s. For some reason, Riot's only response has been a partial revert of their latest buffs, but she's still going to be an Omega broken pick in this role. Look, this is the best chance that anyone has had in a long time to climb. Swallow your ego and lock in bot lane Seraphine, and you'll be farming the most free wins of your life. For me, part of the issue with Seraphine being so strong is just how easy the champion is to play. Literally anyone can lock her in and have a pretty huge impact on the game, without much effort. That being said, does that necessarily make her unhealthy? For today's question of the day, I ask, what types of champions are most unhealthy for League? This is a pretty nuanced question in my opinion. Yeah, she's easy and kind of anti-fun, but is it better when the strong meta picks are all one-shotting assassins or unkillable bruisers that heal through your damage while cutting down your whole team? For me, I think a very unhealthy champion is definitely Yumi, but I get her place in the game. Anyway, whatever you think, give your answers and why you feel that way down in the comments below. Now let's get back on topic. Speaking of obscenely broken champions that Riot refuses to nerf, we have Swain. 
Well, I mean, they did kind of nerf him, but it obviously wasn't enough. He's still outperforming the vast majority of champions in both the mid and bot lane, which isn't really that surprising. The biggest reason is the huge revamp to his ultimate that came with the mid scope update. Before, his ultimate had a much longer cooldown, and even when it was up, it didn't last very long. Kind of like me. <laughs> uh, you know, when I played the old Swain. <clears throat> anyway, play around that, and he wasn't all that scary. But now, he has his ultimate much more often, and if he can stick to at least one foe, he never actually loses it during a fight, no matter how long it gets drawn out. We knew the buff Heimer was getting on this patch would go a long way and help him out, but it's shocking to see how much it's done for him. He's right back to being a super impressive bot laner and mid laner, with virtually no losing matchups. He's even really good as a counter pick in the top lane against certain foes. On top of being objectively strong, he's also a super easy champion to play, so you don't really need to dump dozens of hours of games just to pick him up. Really, it's just understanding the different uses for his different ultimates and executing the basic combos with his grenade and missiles, and you're good to go. Zack has been doing super well as both a top laner and a jungler for several patches in a row now, but Ryze seems to be completely looking the other way. He just brings way too much to the table, he's super tanky, has ridiculously long range engage, and a lot of disruption in teamfights. That would all just make for a pretty solid tank, if it wasn't for the fact that he can also 100-0 the backline carries once he gets onto them. That little tidbit is what really tips things over the edge for me. While there is some room for debate depending on what you're looking for in a champion, our pick for the overall best marksman in the game is Twitch. He's a hyper carry, but you aren't totally just relying on reaching 2 or 3 items like you are with other champions that fall into this category. Twitch actually has pretty high damage in the early game, and can easily start going for kills with an aggressive support in the first few levels of the laning phase. Another thing that sets him ahead of his peers is his ability to be played as an assassin. Other marksmen are forced to rely on the rest of the team to group up and play 5v5s correctly, but as Twitch, you can constantly make picks on the foes that overextend for farm. After his buff at the start of the season, Vegar shot up as one of the most played highest win rate champions in the game. There was no doubt that he was absolutely OP, and eventually Riot did give him some nerfs. But those nerfs were pretty light, and he's continued to be a really strong choice in both the bot and mid lane. The durability patch only made him better, since it hit assassins and burst mages that could previously snowball early against him. On the top of stupidly broken infinite scaling champions, Senna once again makes a list for the millionth time in a row. It's just way too hard to balance a champion that hits as hard as any other carry, but from halfway across the screen, and all without actually farming minions. Honestly, she's been good for so long, I wish that they'd just go ahead and give her a huge nerf so she can be put in timeout for a while. Sometimes it's perfectly fine to beat a champion to death with a nerf bat. We warned this may happen. The nerfs that Janna got this patch weren't really nearly enough, and she's still what we would consider an OP tier pick. She's just got too much going on. Yeah, they hit her slow and shielding abilities, but the other half of her kit is arguably the more broken part. She can completely shut down engage attempts and interrupt enemy channels when played correctly, completely neutralizing certain threats. Even other OP champions on this list, like Zack, can be rendered entirely useless. Since she was first revealed, we knew that Renata Glass was going to be a broken champion. Her kit is just way, way too overloaded for that not to be the case. And boy, we were right, unfortunately. But we assumed that, like with most new champions, she would be subject to a nerf after nerf until she was just sort of a mid-tier or even bad pick. I mean, look at Zeri. It feels like she's had some sort of a nerf on almost every patch since her release. But Renata has flown under the radar. She got hotfix on patch 12.4, the same patch that she was released, which honestly seemed like it was yesterday. Anyway, got a later adjustment on patch 12.9. In both cases, the changes that she got were super small, and had pretty much no impact on her win rate. Finishing off our list, we have Mordekaiser, who makes a list for his dominance in all three topside roles. Being a big lumbering juggernaut, his major weakness is being kiteable, but if you run ghosts and build allies, that is barely even a minor inconvenience. Even the most agile opponent will be easily ran down and bonked in the death realm. He was already doing really well before it hit, but he's definitely one of the champions that the durability patch favored, since he does so well in longer, more extended fights. Honestly, I'm a little bit shocked that Riot hasn't really even mentioned nerfs for him, but nothing the balance team does can really shock me anymore. And that's probably because I'm just so jaded. And that wraps things up for our predictions for the 15 most broken champs on patch 12.13. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure you subscribe so you never miss out on our content like this. And remember, let us know what type of champions are the most unhealthy for the game down in the comments below. Oh yeah, and one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below, where you can discuss the league further, or just hang out and be part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.